have you ever wished that Notion could send you some reminders straight to your phone, a quick push notification when the task is due, or remind you of someone's birthday, or just show you the intentions for your day? Well, good news. In this video, I'm going to walk you through my super simple system to set up custom notifications for Notion. You'll also learn how to avoid a big mistake that could otherwise ruin everything. And I'll share one super helpful workaround so that you can make the most out of these custom notifications. Let's dive in. First, let's take a look at how you can send a custom Notion notification in less than five minutes. All you need is a Notion database with some information to send, a phone and a free Make account. Make is an amazing automation platform to supercharge your Notion workspace and we're going to use them today to help you send these notifications. You can create your free account with a link in the description. But before you do so, make sure to watch to the end of the video so you know exactly how to proceed. For the Notion setup, we can keep things super minimal. So in this case, all I have is a database. That is very important. And in the database, I have two items, one that is important and one that isn't important. Plus then a checkbox uh, to check whenever I want to send a notification for this one actually. Now, you could of course also leave that out, right? And really have just notifications for everything in here. But most of the time, right, you wanna have some more granular control and the checkbox property is a super simple way to start that. With your Notion setup ready, it's time to head on over to Make. If you created your account and logged in, you will see something similar to this, just a lot more empty. And what you wanna do is you wanna click on this create a new scenario button in the top right corner. This opens the visual editor. And the first thing you can do is you can give it a name. In the top left corner, it's a bit small to see here on YouTube, but I hope it still works. And you can just paste in or like call this like simple notifications for Notion. Now, the much more important thing is clicking on this blue button here or this purple button and searching for Notion. The first thing you need to do is you pull in all the information from Notion into the automation. So we select Notion here and then we see all the options that are there. And there are a lot, but don't get overwhelmed. I'll tell you exactly which one to pick. You wanna look for search objects and click on it. And then you get this new context window where you can further set up the action. Now, the next thing you need to do is you need to connect your Notion workspace. I have mine already connected, so I can just click on my Notion connection sandbox. That's the one for the specific account. But in your case, you wanna click on add and go through the steps that uh, Notion will walk you through in order to authorize Make with Notion. Now, during that authorization process, Make will ask you, well, which pages should uh, I get access to? And if you know exactly where your database, the ones that has the notification uh, information in Notion is, that's great and you can select it. But if you don't, don't worry. You can just go through it, don't check any boxes, and then you can go back to Notion, to your page, and then click on the three dots in the top right corner. And then, I'll move myself out of the way, you can see here, add connections. And you can hover over it and you can look for Make. I look for Integromat because that's the old name of the app. So mine is, has still the old name and I give it access to this and now it can read this page and all the information contained in it. Very important that it has access. Once that's the case, you can go again back to uh, make and say, well, what would you wanna search? Yes, database items. And then we wanna get the database ID. So here we click on search and then we search for the name of our database. So I call this what? I need to remember this, okay. so. I need to, I don't need to type everything in. I don't have any other database with that name. So I click on okay and we'll pull in the information in a second. So here it actually found a few that it thought could match that. So I will select, I need to remember this. Then it pulls in the information from the database and will ask us, well, should you get like, should we get all that information or just a specific one? And here's where that uh, checkbox comes in handy because we can now set a filter and say, well, don't grab everything, only grab things where remind me the checkbox is, so we need to go down where it says checkbox equals and then true. So I click in here and this opens this other context box and I click on this pink, purple, true thing. And that's it. Here, last but not least, you could set a limit, right? If you have a lot of items for notifications and you don't want to send notifications for all of them, you could set the limit. Otherwise, I leave this at a 10. That's fine, right? If it has only two things, uh, that's enough. And then what we can do to test it, we can right click this module and say run this module only. And this will pull in the information. Now we can click on the magnifying glass and if it worked, we should see an output here. So you see I have output bundle one and under property values, I can click on here and I can now see the value. So remind me that is true and the name uh, inside here, plain text, what an important thing. That's the name from our Notion database. So that's what you wanna see here to make sure that Notion is correctly connected with Make. Next, we need to install Make's app on our phone to actually send these notifications. There's a version both for iPhones and for Android users. I'll link to them down below in the description. So just get your phone and install the Make app. 
With the Make app installed, we can go back to Make and then we can click on this plus button to add another module to our automation. And the second module is called the iOS module. So Apple iOS or in case you use Android, you would go for the Android module. Both work exactly the same. So in case, in this case, I will use the iOS module. So I click on Apple iOS. We can also like do push notifications, but this one has a few more options. So Apple iOS, and then we can see, we can create a calendar event, a contact, a reminder, push notification, or we can upload a photo. And what we want to do in this our case is we want to create a push notification. So we click on here. And then again, we get this option where we need to add a device. Now in my case, I've already authorized my device. So I can click on here and I click on my iPhone. In your case, what you want to do is you want to click on add and then you want to first give it a device name, right? So like <laughs> another uh, iPhone, click on continue. And this pulls up the settings here. If you, you open the Make app, you get also like the options here to log in and it will ask you to either scan this QR code or to put in the device and the zone. Now, one thing to know here is that this uh, login can be a bit finicky. For me, it took like three attempts to pair it. After that, it worked flawlessly, but for the first two times, it couldn't scan the QR code. It just kept giving me an error. But I removed the, or I tried to create a, a new uh, device and then after the second attempt or third attempt, it worked and again, then <laughs> it stays connected. So you wanna go through this and then connect your device. And once that's the case, you can choose it here. So my iPhone. And now you can set the information of your push notification. First, the title, that's the main thing of the information. And you see what happens if I click into it. If I click into it, I get all the information from the previous modules. So I have two options. Either I can just hard code something, I can just write something that should be shown every single time, right? For example, if I want it to just say a uh, new notification from Notion as the main thing, I could just type that in here. But if you want to already pull the information from the uh, device, uh, from your Notion database in here, you could also go here on the site and you see under property values, name, you can go here and then where it says plain text was an important thing. You can just click on that and that will pull it in dynamically. Now, in my case, I want here always to say, to say new notification and in the body, so what it says below, I wanna pull in that information. Perfect. That's the main stuff of the setup already. For the action, we can then say whether we wanna open the browser. So in case we wanna link to that information in Notion, we can do that. So I will do that, open browser. And as a URL, I will put in the URL of Notion. So that means if you click on the notification, it will open up Notion on that specific page. And then priority, we wanna deliver it immediately. Well, click okay, and that's it. Now you just click on run once and we'll send you a notification. So let's actually click on run once and in a second, it should show up on the phone. That is work flawlessly. Last but not least, let's schedule this so that we don't actually have to click here to send a notification. To do so, here in the bottom left, you see the settings like every 15 minutes and scheduling on off. So I will click on every 15 minutes and that allows me to set a regular interval or like any other type for scheduling. So what I want to do, I want to be like reminded every day at let's say, um, oops, nine, I want to get this uh, notification. So I click on okay and then I will uh, turn scheduling on and that means now like every morning at nine, this automation will look into the database, figure out what it should remind me of, and then send me a notification. That's how easy it is to send notifications directly from Notion to your phone. Now that you know how to send notification, let's make them great. With a simple approach, you can only send notifications at a specific defined time. Whenever the automation runs, you send a notification. But what if you want to have more control than just this, you know, one specific time a day? For example, what if you have a specific time for a meeting and you want a notification exactly then? Well, here's that super helpful workaround I mentioned earlier to help you achieve exactly that. Start in your Notion setup and make sure you now have a date property with a specific time attached to it. So if you don't know how to do it, right, if you add a date property and then if you click into any date, it allows you to check include time at the bottom and now you have this date property. So here I say, okay, in two days at 11 a.m. I want this reminder to hit. Now you can go back to your Notion and you can create another automation. So in this case, we again have like the same setup. We have our initial uh, search Notion module that pulls in the information. And then this time when we add the iOS module, you don't wanna go for the uh, push notification, you wanna go for a reminder. That way we can create a native Apple reminder and that reminder will then be triggered at a specific time that we set for it. So I click on to create a reminder. And then in here again, I choose my device, my iPhone, I give it a title. So in this case, the title uh, is probably the name itself, right? What an important thing to do. And then we can set a start date, a due date, and an alarm. And for all of these, the Notion date format works. So if you go in here and under when, right? This is my new property. I have now this start property. Oops, let's go back in. 
I have the start property that includes both the date and the time. So I can click on that and put it in there. And if I want to have a due date or an alarm as well, then I could do the same. And of course you could have like three different properties in Notion to pull all the information in. Last but not least, I can set also priority and notes. So in this case, let's set one as the highest priority. And then for notes, right, if you had another property in your Notion database to pull uh, in, then you could adhere, right? In our case, we don't have anything. So we just click on okay. And then one very important thing that tricked me up, uh, tripped me up the first time I set this up. You will need to go into your Make app, and in the Make app, you need to go over to Settings, scroll down a bit, and then where it says Reminders, you want to click on Reminders, and then you need to toggle on the first option. That will then trigger like a question from the, uh, the your iPhone whether you allow it to access reminders, and that's very important because otherwise it can't add a reminder. So the first few times I tried this, I was like all confused. Well, why does it add, doesn't it not add reminders? Well. That's why. So you need to go in there, talk, tickle, uh, toggle that on, and then you can actually test the automation. So just like before, we'll let's click on run once, and then in a second, it should show up on our iPhone under the reminders options. And there it is. So this one works as well. And this is how you can get like this very, very granular control regardless of when this automation runs, right? You still wanna schedule this automation, right? To say like, okay, at certain times, go into Notion, pull all the information out and add them as reminders into um, my phone but it's a lot more flexible like that. Now, if you wanna do the same on an Android, I'm sure there's a workaround, but I'm just not entirely sure how it works because if you go in here and you go on the Android app, you'll see that you have the only the option to send a push notification. You don't have the same built-in reminders. So there's not an option uh, to do it here. So what you would probably need to do is you need to get a different reminder tool where you can send API requests to and then hack it together that way. So in that case, having an iPhone is definitely an advantage. You're nearly a Notion notification master, but there's one last trap you need to avoid. If you have a lot of items, you definitely don't want this to happen. Here's how to avoid that notification spiral of doom. You basically run this risk if you have a lot of things that you need to be reminded of. Because what happens in Make is that it will pull all the information, so all the different reminders in, and then if you have set it to push notifications, it will send all these push notifications individually at the same time. You can observe this in Make. If you have a lot of items, you can just click on Run Once, and what you will see is that Every single item here, you know, sends an individual push notification because it has like all of these individual bundles, right? These are all the different things that you want to be reminded of <laughs> in Notion. And every single time it does the whole automation. That's not what we want. Instead, what we want, if we have several items, we want to group them together and send them as one push notification. And here's how. We start by adding another module between these two. So in here, we click, we right click between them and then we pick the add a module option. And then we search for um, variable. Now there's not a variable module, but there are tools. And if you click on tools, you then get the variable options. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to get a variable. And that might be confusing because you might wonder, well, we haven't set a variable, which variable are we supposed to retrieve? But trust me, this will make sense in a second. So we can just call this items or whatever you want to, doesn't matter. And then we add another module. And here, so we click between the first one and the second one, and we add uh, another um, oops, a variable module. So again, we go to tools and this time we will set the variable. And in here, we want to give it the same name, right? It needs to be items and don't click on here because if you click on here, you don't pull in items, you pull in the value of items, which is nothing at the moment. So type items, then the variable lifetime, one cycle, that's perfect. And then for the value, uh, here comes the tricky part. The value is supposed to be the name that we want to be reminded of, right? So the information here. But not just that, because if we would do that, then what we would happen is that every single time we run this, it would like get a variable, right? Ignore that for now. It would set a variable to the current name and then still send you a push notification of just that one, right? You can also, if you click actually uh, on here, uh, oops, explain flow, you see how this works, right? Every single point goes to through the end and that happens 10 times. Instead, what we want is we want to click on set variable and before the plain text, so before the, the new value that we pull in, we want to make sure that we include the current value of items. And now it maybe starts to make sense. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to loop through these two steps until it covered all the information here, right? So all the bundles that it found here should be added to that one variable. And only when it's done with that, it should send the push notification. We're nearly done. The last thing that we need to do is to make sure that this only continues when it has set all the variables and we can do that with a filter. So we click on here and we say, and we can just call this done. And the condition for it to be done is that the bundle order position, so the current item that it's processing is the last one, right? So the total number of bundles. So we say bundle order position 
should be equal to, and not like the text operator, but a number operator, so numeric equal to, and then should be equal to the total number of bundles. And with this setup, it will now create uh, this one big variable and only then send us one push notification. So let's check it. Actually, one last thing that I forgot, we need to of course also make sure that our notification in the end doesn't send the value from the beginning, but sends the variable value, right? So let's remove this and then let's go to tools and like pick this last item one, click on OK. And now if we run this, we will see that we only sent one push notification after we, you know, collapsed or like compiled all these 10 values into one. So I can see here operation 10, it has as the items, all these individual ones listed into one. And that's the value that we then sent so that we don't get like buried in these notifications. Or, you know, you could just use AI to take all your tasks and have them summarized for you. If that is a use case you're interested in, let me know down in the comments so I make this video next. Congratulations, you just unlocked a new superpower for Notion. Now, Notion can speak to you through your phone. But just imagine for a second how cool it would be if it worked also the other way around. If you could just talk to your phone and things would show up in Notion. Well, here's a step-by-step -step guide to help you achieve exactly that.